So today I am pruning my centennial variegated kumquat. I have never taken care of a tree before. Um, I've certainly never taken care of a citrus tree before. Um, but I decided I wanted to start a new project and bought this tree for my birthday, um, which was at the end of August. Uh, when I got the tree, I immediately repotted it out of the nursery pot, um, which was black and trees. If you keep a tree in a dark pot, um, it can fry the roots, especially since in my little Philly backyard, I have a cement patio, so the sun can get really intense. So I switched it out to this yellow pot to make sure that the leaves or that the roots um, would still be able to breathe. Um, and since the tree has gotten some time to get used to its little pot, I am now taking the time to prune it back. And like I said before, I've, I've never taken care of a citrus fruit tree. Um, but I grew up on a farm and my and I grew up watching my dad and my grandfather take care of our apple orchard um, as well as some of our other trees and bushes. So I am comfortable with pruning plants <laughs> um, but I had to do research on like how to take care of um, citrus trees and a few of the things I learned which I ended up doing a combination, I couldn't find information on like pruning this variety of trees specifically um, and certainly not in a container in the Philadelphia area. Most of the information about citrus tree care is um, and kumquat care is actually for California. Um, so I had to like think about the needs of the trees there and how to modify it for my situation. And yeah, so right now I'm basically trying to get rid of any branches that are crossing over each other um, because as the tree gets larger, those can rub against each other and damage the bark, which will leave it susceptible to um, disease and pests. Uh, similarly, uh, these trees do like a humid climate however if the foliage is too dense towards the center of the tree um, humidity can build up too much which leaves the tree again susceptible to pest and disease so i'm just trying to prune giving space um, to the inside of the tree and also i am shaping the tree because it's in a container, I intend to keep it in a container its whole life, I really want this tree to be symmetrical and that will help prevent it from tipping over as it gets older or worse if a branch gets too long um, and, it's, and it bears too much fruit that could drag the branch down um, and because it doesn't have the ground beneath it to like help keep that tree supported it can just keep being brought down which could tear the limb off of the tree um, which would be really unfortunate so I'm preemptively like making decisions about what branches I think are healthy um, and yeah getting keeping the the branches that are gonna serve this tree the best in its life um, in terms of what branches I'm deciding to keep and not to keep, um, this was actually something I learned from some of the bonsai videos I watched. I, I ended up doing a combination of research. I, I watched how people take care of their trees in the ground. I watched how people take care of large trees in containers like in California. And I also watched some bonsai videos. Um, and listen to the decisions that bonsai growers make about what branches to keep and which ones to get rid of. And so like uh, a big decision I'm making here uh, or a factor I'm paying attention to is the mass. 
of a branch and how many leaves it has in proportion to how large the branch is. Um, so any of the branches that are on the smaller side and have a lot of leaves, I'm trying to keep those because those are the ones that will be able to provide um, the best energy for its limbs. Whereas a really long branch with only a few limbs on it is not, it just isn't as likely to survive. It's really difficult, especially in a cooler environment and in the fall and winter when we have less sun, the tree won't be able to efficiently take in energy to support that branch. Um, and you can see at this point in the video that uh, the tree is really starting to take shape, especially, especially right there. Like, um, I'm loving how perfectly oval it is. It's a little symmetric, uh, asymmetrical from that last angle, um, because that's kind of how the tree started out. <laughs> it was pretty lopsided. Um, I think the growers did a pretty good job pruning this initially. They took the lead branch off the middle and I believe that was done just to keep the tree really short, which is nice for the container growing. Uh, it keeps things nice and compact so the tree won't be top heavy and that decreases the chances of it tipping over as it grows more. Um, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people can be very scared to prune plants. It, it feels unnatural and it can feel like you're doing harm to the tree, but if you pay attention to what you're doing and you think about your tree's needs, like it's kind of like growing yourself where sometimes you, you have to choose to let go of parts of you that aren't serving yourself and aren't keeping you healthy and that can be a hard thing too we we can get caught up in this idea that like these different aspects of ourselves these different ways that we've learned to cope with the world and survive in this world can feel like a part of our identity um but sometimes, sometimes those, those coping me methods don't serve us anymore. Um, so we have to cut them away and let new things grow. Um, and yeah, every time you, you remove something from a tree, you're creating space for, for new growth um, and oftentimes healthier growth. Um, I think that's really important to keep in mind for yourself and when you're taking care of your plants. And it can be scary. It can be scary to get rid of all that beautiful, bushy foliage. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's what's going to serve you best. It's what's going to keep you healthiest what needs to be done. So yeah, this is my centennial barricaded kumquat tree. Um, I think I'm calling him Keith. Keith the kumquat. Because, you know, why not?